Welcome back to Viewpoint. I'm Jim Zogby. My next guest is U.S. Congressman Brian Baird, represents Washington State's 3rd Congressional District. He's a five-term Democrat, serves on the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, the Budget Committee, and the Science and Technology Committee, where he serves as subcommittee chairman. He's a member of over 30 House caucuses and vice chairman of the newly formed Friends of Jordan Caucus. Thanks for joining us, Congressman. Great to be with you, Jim. Thank you. Um, I want to put up a quote from your statement uh, about Iraq when you announced what, what became rather shocking news to some in the country, a change in your view. Let's put this up and take a look at what Congressman Baird said. The invasion of Iraq may be one of the worst foreign policy mistakes in the history of our nation. As tragic and costly as that mistake has been, a precipitous or premature withdrawal of our forces now has the potential to turn the initial errors into an even greater problem, just as success looks possible. Um, I, like you, was frustrated back then, a year ago, with the poll in the polls in the debate. It was got to get out, got to stay, and someplace in between was was reality. Uh, you tried to figure that middle ground out, but you took some heat for it, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, a fair bit. You know, thankfully, though, Jim, the, 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 the numbers since last August got better. Uh, U.S. casualties dropped, uh, Iraqi casualties dropped, both civilian and military, and that's good news. That gives us a basis where maybe we can uh, make some further progress, and, and uh, still too many people are dying, still great difficulty on the ground, uh, but, but things are better than they were in what, August. What turned your, your view from where it was to where it is? Well, I oppose the wars, as I, and I still think it's a terrible mistake. But once you've made that commitment, uh, once you've destabilized a region, you know, Jim, we dismantled their police force, their military force, left West weapons caches unguarded, left the borders open, uh, and laid 500,000 people off, off their jobs and uh, created conditions of instability. You know, the average Iraqi never lifted a finger to harm anybody in the United States, and yet we created a, a chaotic world that's cost 100,000 of their lives. And we have, I think, a moral responsibility uh, to those people to try to help improve their lives. And we have a strategic interest. The story that doesn't get told uh, in our media very much is what happens if Iraq collapses into greater chaos? What happens to Jordan? What happens uh, to Iran's power base? Where does al-Qaeda expand? They weren't there before the war. They are there now. And they pose a real threat. And um, so the real question then became, we had some signs of progress, but potential for even greater chaos if we withdrew prematurely. And I think that left us with the choices were horrible or extremely horrible. There were no good choices. Um, there was another choice, though. There was the Iraq Study Group report, which mm -hmm. I, I, I found very interesting because I will never forget in um, uh, 2006, the election, um, th that night when Democrats had won, and it was clear that they were going to be in the majority. I was listening to the various party spokespeople on both sides, actually, talking about what comes next. And invariably, the, the first question they were asked is, what are you going to do about Iraq? And the first answer was, well, we're going to wait and see what comes in the Iraq study group report. Democrats said it, and Republicans said it. Uh, the report came, and it was much awaited but also extremely ignored. It got put on the shelf and dust has been collected ever since. It, it looked for a bipartisan way out to get out, but to do so responsibly by creating a security framework that would allow for stability and for the U.S. to leave. It, it, clearly, we can't stay forever in a situation like that. You heard Patrick Coburn talk about the the mess that's there and the fact that it's not getting better and to some degree we've become more of a divisive force than we were before. But we're stuck. I mean, we, we absent doing something new, we're going to be there forever or if we leave more, more difficulty, despite what some Iraqis say that it'll all fall in place if we do leave. Uh, is there any new thinking going on? I mean, is there anybody who says, let's bring Jim Baker and Lee Hamilton back to the table? Is there anybody asking for some new ideas or are we still stuck with the stay, leave or chaos. Well, I think we have to have some new thinking. And, and one of the things I've said all along about if we, you know, the, one of the arguments has been, uh, well, we should impose a timetable as if that will force people to get together. You can make cogent arguments that imposing a timetable causes people to withdraw into their own camps mm -hmm. and get ready for the chaos that would follow. Uh, 
there is an interesting change that I think has happened. Last year, when one spoke with a number of Iraqis, they would say, you folks have to leave once it's safe for you to leave. Mm -hmm. And there was this sense of, we want you out of our country. We don't want to see ourselves as occupied. But we acknowledge that if you left now, the thing falls apart. Some of the successes of the Iraqi security forces suggest to me that maybe people are saying, we are getting closer now to being able to handle our own security. Uh, and you need to start looking for the time when you will leave. I think it's best for us and for the Iraqis if a timetable comes not imposed by a congressional fiat uh, or, frankly, by our executive branch, but by the Iraqis themselves working maybe back channels with our people and saying, look, this level of withdrawal will allow our troops to, to, and police forces to gain security. Under the surface of this stability, mm -hmm. There are some deep sectarian rivalries. I mean, the the Muqtada al Sadr people lost, but the the better brigade, in the disguise of the military, are now in control. Mm -hmm. The the armed groups in the Anbar province and in the western part of Baghdad are as sectarian as ever, and the Kurds are sitting pretty and looking for ways to expand southward. I mean, there is a calming of, in the violence, but not a a, a de-intensification of the, the divisions that are there. I mean, it still is a seething cauldron that in some ways the calm is masking. It is. I think there are a couple of critical events coming up. And, and, uh, and I wish, you know, unfortunately, that the debate about the status of forces agreement is now starting to mirror the get out now, stay forever debate. And somewhere in there has to be a, a, a more realistic, uh, maybe not happy, but a more realistic medium. Uh, I think one of the critical events we have to look to are this fall's provincial elections. Uh, they're likely, I understand the date, is likely to slip past October, but uh, there are some logistic issues and some political issues and, and legal issues to sort out. But that provincial election has a chance to change some of the local power structures sub substantially. And then, of course, next year there are national elections. The, the, an interesting question is, uh, in, an, in an ideal image of the U.S. presence, would be that our role there is to create a stable enough system wherein a real and fair and representative election can, in fact, take mm -hmm. place. If you're skeptical as an Iraqi about that, one might say, well, the Americans are really just staying to make sure their guys win the election. If it's the former, one could say that we can stay there, help them have a fair and reasonable election. If that transition can be achieved, then a more gradual withdrawal, because they'll have even more experience and more trained security. Uh, and maybe they can get along politically at that point. That is certainly my hope, both in terms of that's what our role would be and that would be the sequence of events after that point.